Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this one we're going to make a Tetris game using Arduino in a 8x8 LED matrix. Overall, I'm going to cover a demo, uh, then a program flowchart, basically show you the overall structure, how things are getting called out and when. And we're going to use existing uh, LED control library. I will post a link and we're going to make some modifications to that. And uh, we can also go over the overall Arduino code, and I'll post the schematic and code in the description. So let's look at the demo. Let's look at the flowchart, like the overall. Uh, if you look at the overall flowchart, you have your global variables, there's a setup block, and there's a main uh, loop, the void loop block, and there's some external functions like the block functions and the translation functions. And uh, you define your global variables, and also there's this uh, the LED libraries. This is existing libraries that we're going to use uh, with Arduino, and uh, someone else created those. And you can download those uh, from GitHub. It's made by Yoda. And uh, you just have to download the zip folder. I'll show you how to download it. And uh, we'll use that. But we also have to make modifications to that library because these three functions are not there in that library. And we need these game over, line break, and the get status function uh, to make our game work. So you have to figure out if it's LEDs on and off. Uh, after you define your global variables, you define uh, stuff in your setup uh, block, like you initialize the LED matrix, you set the in uh, intensity for the LEDs, then you move on to the main loop, the main void loop, and the program basically randomly picks blocks. Is I In this case, I only coded, coded two blocks, the I block and S block, and uh, once it randomly picks the block, uh, you have the control to change its orientation and you can change that with the joystick button and let's say this uh, eye block will change it to straight or vertical um, or horizontal orientation and then it will check the uh, adjacent checks if the adjacent LEDs are on and off based on that you can control the motion of the block and uh, for this I have these three blocks here uh, functions here the tra down translate right translate and left translate. So as soon as the block reaches the bottom limit, uh, we'll do a line break and game over check. And uh, those two functions are coded inside the LED libraries. And basically we'll check for the uh, line break and game over status. And there's this get status function is basically called through these block function for adjacent checks and stuff. And the set LED is also called in these two blocks to turn on certain LEDs and also turn off certain LEDs. And this is like the overall uh, structure. I haven't coded all the blocks, but you know it's possible to code other blocks in the same pattern and same uh, kind of strategy that I used in this one. And we're going to modify this LED libraries and I'll show you next how to modify those and also kind of how to add those to your program. So let's go over how to add the library to your Arduino IDE. So you have your Arduino IDE installed. Just open a new vin window, go to Sketch, Include Library, and click on this Add Zip Library. I'm not going to do it here, but uh, you just simply select the f zip file that you downloaded from GitHub page for the library, and it automatically uh, adds it to the Arduino IDE. After adding it to the IDE, you simply go to where your zip file is downloaded, double click, and you'll see these two source files, .cpp and .h file. Uh, this is where we're going to make our modifications and uh, add code to it so to get uh, the status of the LED, the line break checks, and this uh, game over status check also. Uh, like here, uh, there are the three functions that I'm going to add. 
and I've already modified it here and uh, we'll kind of quickly go over what exactly they're doing so this is the uh, integer type function and the input of these function is the address the row and the column the address is basically if you have multiple LED matrices uh, in series you can select which one uh, are you calling to and then you call the row and column and see if that particular LED it's on or off I'm using a switch function here because I believe the column, uh, the way I, uh, the order of the columns that I started coding was the opposite to the what the library was using. But so I, all I did, I didn't want to change my code, so I just switch uh, column here. Basically, the number eight column is number one, and number two column is number seven, and vice versa. And from here, I'm using the uh, bit read function. This is the AVR programming built-in function, and uh, returning the value of zero or one, basically the status. If one is it returns one, that means the LED is on. If it returns zero, LED is off. When we get to the Arduino code, I'll show you how to call these functions and get the status uh, based on what LED you called. So basically, it just checks for the LEDs and uh, returns it checks the status of the LED if it's zero or not, not zero or one and uh, if it's zero it will return the value if it's uh, if it's one it will also return that value then this is the line break function and I'm using a for loop to run this multiple times uh, after the block reaches the bottom so it checks the bottom line that if all the light LED lights are on, if that row, the row zero is 255, I mean all the bits in that row are on, then you basically repl to replace the status of row zero with row one, and row one with row two, and row two with row three, and so on. Last function uh, is the LED game over function. I'm using a loop to check this after the block reaches its limit. It will check if all the uh, LEDs in a vertical pattern are on. If they're on, it will do a game over sequence. It will just blink and it will just stop. Uh, then uh, in the dot .h file, you got to add these three lines under this public class. So these are our three uh, class members that will go under public class because our Arduino function needs to be able to access this. So it has to go under public. And uh, I'll post this code in the description. So let's go over the Arduino code side by side uh, next to a flowchart. Uh, first, you want to include the LED control library. That's how you actually include it to your OR code. Uh, or you can do it hash include uh, double quotes LED control. And then you want to define a handle and uh, all the pin 12, 11, and 10. And the 4 is just the maximum number of modules, the LED modules that are connected. In my case, it's 4, uh, so I'll leave it as 4. Uh, so the LED control LC is just our handle. That's how we're going to call our functions from the library. And then we define our uh, uh, variable pins, uh, like the joystick pins, and then... Uh, float variables, R, R is a row, C is a column, uh, the address is zero, the address is basically, you know, the calling the, uh, which module are you calling in terms of uh, the matrix module. And we have some uh, more variables that I'm using in my function, the previous, uh, means the previous value of uh, the address, previous value of row, and previous value of column. I'm just initializing to 1000, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, then I have the RO, and this is just a rotation the orientation for the block. And I also have the rotation, the RO, the previous value as well. C2 and R2 are there, just the input for the other functions. Uh, and I have these check variables, so left check, right check, and the bottom check. And the block is initialized to zero. We'll use the block, we'll use a switch function to randomly call I block or S block. Let's go over to the main uh, setup function. There you go, the main setup, uh, void setup function here. And uh, uh, look, yeah, I don't need this line here, so I'm going to commentate. Uh, this is where you initialize your pins, your variables, like the, which one's input and output. 
and also this is there to randomize the block selection and uh, you just begin the serial port and uh, this basically gives you how many uh, LED modules are connected and uh, based on that number you run that loop uh, that many times using for loop and you can see the uh, LC dot shutdown uh, is the shutdown is the f uh, library function that we're calling using the LC handle so we're gonna say don't shut down turn on all LED set the int intensity to 8 and then you clear display let's move on to the main loop function uh, we'll randomize the block cases I'm using a switch case for the block so we're gonna randomize the value between negative 1 and 2 and uh, we'll go over the switch case a little bit later and uh, the row you for the new block, the new blocks, the starting row will be the top row, 8, and the middle column. And uh, the address will be 0 because I'm using only one module. And the first thing is here is the randomizing, the randomized selection of the blocks. So I'm using a switch case for blocks, and um, the case 1 basically selects the I block. <coughs> and uh, the case 0 will select the S block, which is uh, further down. In the, in the code. We'll go over that. And next thing is you're deciding the orientation. The orientation basically uh, is controlled by the middle mouse button of the joystick. And here are some conditions for those. So it just increases and then as soon as uh, it reaches 2, it goes back to 0. So basically the rotation cases, orientation cases, is also a switch case of 0 and 1. So I'm switching row uh, if I'm doing zero, it'll be a horizontal orientation, and if I'm doing a switch case uh, uh, one for the rotation, it will be a, a vertical orientation. I'm also kind of putting boundaries for the columns. The starting column needs to be between one to eight, and then I'm doing some uh, checks. If the left left LED is on and the right LED is off, that means I I can only translate in the right side, not in the left side, and also I can translate down. So that's where the status true, false, and true comes from. And so I'm going to be doing these checks for all sides, and then you do the same checks for the vertical side as well. You repeat the thing, and then you say, so R of the row keeps changing as the blocks keep dropping. So it will drop every time by 0.125 every uh, 225 milliseconds. And we will call the block function. So you have to call the block function after all the controls are inputted. And it will call the uh, I block function here. This is the I block function. We have an input of the address, R of the row, the C, the column, and RO is just the orientation. And uh, it, this also has a case orientation, which is horizontal or vertical. So based on that, we'll perform these checks. We have to turn off the previous L LEDs that were on because the block is dropping and turn on the new LEDs based on the information, row, column information. We turn on these LEDs calling the set LED function from the library. Over how, what the strategy is behind calling these row columns and stuff. Uh, let's see you have these uh, four LEDs. Uh, this represents the horizontal line. Uh, and let's say if this is R, and uh, what I mean by that is, uh, so from, let's say from right to left are rows, and from top to bottom are our columns. And then we know in this 8x8 matrix, this R is some number, and then the C is some number. And if I want to turn on the next LED, I, I can keep the same R. All I have to do is subtract the column by 1. And same thing, subtract the column by 2 on the next one, and subtract the column for the last one by 3. So if I, it, just by putting one number, you can kind of elaborate uh, and turn on other adjacent LCD LEDs uh, and basically form blocks and shapes. But after you form shapes, you need to know what the adjacent LED statuses are. Uh, 
so you know when the block has reached its limit and it needs to stop. So the way you want to do this, you want to just keep the same strategy and uh, in this case, this horizontal line, we know we need to check the next bottom uh, LED status. So in this case, it'll, we'll just check for R minus 1 because we know the R, R is same and then you just subtract 1 to so get the same um, the bottom adjacent um, status and you follow the same strategy for the next three uh, green dots and then you get the status and you based on that you uh, allow the controls to the user from the main loop. And you do the same thing for S block as well you have the same case the, the two orientation cases and uh, same checks and same uh, little controls uh, so these are these are the checks that you do. So let's say if the left left LED is on and the right LED is off, then you can only go on right. You can't go on left. Uh, based on that, we call these left translate, right translate functions, and call it the state, and tell them what the C what is. And now uh, based on the joystick movement, and say if the uh, the X value is greater than 800, and the column will be plus plus because the column will be moving to the uh, right side. And uh, if the status falls, the column won't move anything if you move, if you move the joystick. Uh, same thing you do for the down translate and right translate as well. Um, and then uh, then after you call the function, you gotta go back to the uh, row. Row will keep uh, automatically changing every time it uh, runs through the loop, and it keeps calling the uh, block function, either I or block I or S, and it will do a bottom check bottom LED check and as soon as the bottom LED check reaches it will just say oh you've reached the bottom column it will stop and it will go to a new block same thing we do uh, we do the whole thing uh, this the case into a do while loop so basically you're saying oh do all that keep bringing down the block allow the input um, till the block reaches the bottom uh, row and in this case when the bottom re it reaches the bottom row like less than one, it will stop and the switch will break and uh, we'll get a new block. Uh, it's the same thing for the S block as well and after all that is done we call it the line break function and the lines, uh, line, uh, sorry, game over function, that's how you call it, it's just simply LC dot line break and uh, LC dot game over function. Uh, so this is it. Um, hopefully this video was helpful in uh, if you think it was helpful, then uh, please uh, support my channel, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.